Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble. And we go until midnight tonight from the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Larry Bubbles Brown has high speed internet. <laughs> and for the presses. And he got the high speed internet, and in honor of that, this call today is still being done on a telephone. What is that? <laughs> you know, you should just call me by Skype or something. And well, oh God, we got to teach you that now. Yeah, it's going to require a lot of tutorial. Well, you know, you're not a stupid person. I think I am. You, you think you're stupid? I think in many ways, yeah. Stupid? Uh huh. How are you stupid? Uh, there's just certain things I can't figure out. No. Like what? Give me an example. Uh, just all kind of things, like the computer. All uh, anything done with a computer. Uh, I think I've never been. I think I've been completely retarded when it comes to putting an act together. Like I, I've never put together a really good headlining act. So. What do you mean? Well, you're not a headliner. I guess not. not no, uh, but that's not bad. Like, who lasted in movies the longest? The star or the supporting the actor? actor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The supporting actor works constantly. He's the guy who you say, wasn't he the guy who was in that thing? Right? Mm-hmm. And you can't, you don't know his name, but, man, you've seen him hundreds of times. And uh, so you're, you're, there's nothing wrong with being... A uh, what you are because you carved out a niche. Like how many comics do you know who were once big stars in the comedy world just no longer exist doing comedy? Right. I mean, we can name guys in San Francisco who everybody talked about as being the big comics in the area, and uh, Larry Bubbles Brown's still around. They're not. I mean, where's Marty Cohn these days? I think he's probably. I don't know, directing traffic somewhere. He, uh, he's, I think he's in Las Vegas, but I don't think he performs. I think he's a real estate broker, isn't he? Something Could like be, that. Yeah. Yeah. Now this was a guy who, at least everybody knew the name for a while, didn't they? Was he was pretty big. He wasn't very good, but he was pretty big. Yeah, he was on. Uh, before I got into comedy, he was on a show called. Solid Gold. Remember yeah, that's that? Right. They, uh, would that's right. Would play music, and they had these dancers, and he was the he did the comedy on that show. Yeah, they had him do a little set or whatever. And then he had a radio show in San Francisco. Well, he tried to compete against me, and didn't he could not compete. He, with he you. couldn't come close. Yeah. No. Well, because the, when I started doing comedians in the, on the show, everybody in San Francisco would go, "Well, how hard is that to do? You just bring a comic in, and you let him do all the work." Hey, you know what would ha- what would really work? Alex Bennett isn't a comedian, but if we hired a comedian, right? So they yeah. go out and they hire Marty Cohn to do a morning show, and it flops. Well, most of the radio shows would uh, just have comics come on and do their act, and when we'd come on your show, we would interact with you. So it was yeah, it was much yeah. much better. But I mean, when I left San Francisco, they tried to replace me with Johnny Steele. How long mm-hmm. did that last? A month it and a half. It didn't last long, and then mm-hmm. uh, then the, what they do? They then the Stern came in. Yep, and they, because the state it was bought by Infinity, which ran Stern Show. And uh, the main reason why, when Infinity bought Live One Hundred Five, the reason I was then out is they had Stern on in in uh, in San Jose. Right. K-Rock. And that was the closest they could come to having him in the Bay Area. And they knew the only way they would make room for him is if they got rid of me. 
That's actually what really happened, folks. So uh, I was out. Then they brought Johnny Steele in as a kind of, what can I call it, sherbet? Something to cleanse the palate, you know? So or a buffer? That, I don't know. Okay. Well, anybody who would follow me doing a show was doomed to failure. It yeah. happened twice. It happened when I when they fired me the first time, and they brought in that guy from San Jose. I can't remember his name now. Was, that guy was huge for a while in San Jose. It was uh, was it Perry Stone? Yeah, but he was huge in San Jose. But when he came to San Francisco, he failed. And the reason why he failed is my old cardinal rule in show business: you don't want to follow the guy who was successful at it. You know, so mm -hmm. you didn't want to follow me. That was that was not a good idea. But uh, uh, so they brought me back, and then they I got fired again, right? And they bring in <laughs> they bring in uh, uh, Johnny Steele. Well, he was doomed to failure, and they knew that. He was just brought in to cleanse the palate of yeah, Alex. Yeah, your, your show was doing well when they let you go. Yeah, but. It, it, they were cleansing the palate so they could bring Stern in. And then when they brought Stern in, I mean, they'd bring him in. He didn't do the show out of the station. Uh, when they brought Stern into that slot, it was easy going because it wasn't going to be compared to me. It was going to be compared to Perry, uh, to uh, Johnny Steele. Mm -hmm. You know, who really wasn't meant to do a radio show in the first place. You know. But the idea that, hey, a comic can do it. No, a comic is... You're trained for something entirely different than I was trained. I mean, I never... Did you ever see me try to get up on stage and do comedy? <laughs> no. I mean, I hosted shows, but I never tried to do comedy. I might say a few things up there that made people laugh, but it was only because I was referencing something that was on the radio show, Right. So. Yeah, when comedy was big, I'd heard they they tried comics at radio stations all over the country, and it was pretty much a colossal flop. Well, because they didn't realize that radio is a different medium than 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 stand up comedy, and that you're trained to a certain discipline, and I was trained in another discipline, and I think I'm very good or was very good in that discipline, uh, and you're very good in your discipline. But that doesn't mean you can come do my discipline and expect to succeed. You know, to begin with, a yeah, comic, you you had to have interviewing skills, which uh, most people don't. Well, have. here's the difference: uh, you go up and you do forty-five minutes if you're lucky. If I'm lucky, if I can remember it. If you can remember forty-five minutes, but you go up, you do forty-five minutes. Let's say you're the headliner; you do forty-five minutes. Uh you have worked for years getting that 45 minutes together, okay? I go on every day for three hours, four hours. And I'm doing it fresh every day. What's the difference? It's the discipline that I was trained in as opposed to the discipline you were trained in. Mm -hmm. I could never get on stage all by myself and do a dynamite 45 minutes. Impossible. Impossible. I was never trained that way. But I can do three, four hours of broadcasting every day because that's how I was trained. So that, that that's what I think most of these stations never understood. They never understood the nature of, to begin with, what a good radio host is uh, is comprised of. So, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> Well, people that run businesses generally don't. It's amazing they run businesses since they don't know how to run most of them. I got a, uh, a, a, a note through YouTube from somebody. Let me see if I can uh, find it here. Uh, and I um, and the person wrote, uh, what, what name did he use? Well, uh, uh, it was Forbin Colossus. He's a guy that... Um, Writes on writes me all the time. Says Alex, can you come back to this topic you do so well, the radio business? There's a new live 105 in San Francisco. Your general comments about the how the business has changed with consolidation is fascinating. Thanks in advance. 
Yeah. Well, you know, they brought back Live 105, but they didn't bring back Live 105. They brought back a radio station named Live 105. Exactly, yeah. And, if, if, you know, anybody who... Th- it's They're trying to sucker you, okay? But it isn't Live 105. There's no equivalent of Alex Bennett on the station. Uh, there, there are none, no equivalent of the people who were on the station originally. Uh, and to simply change the name back to Live 105 just admits that you should have never changed it to whatever you changed it to in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know. But to think that it's the old Live 105, no. I mean, I could, uh, if, if they didn't take that, I could in New York, if I could get a Channel 105, call it Live 105. So what? It's not the same station. You know. So that's my take on that. So now I you get, said uh, you said if that if we came back like the old station, you didn't think it would work today anyway. What I I don't know my show. Uh, no, I I don't I don't know if it would work. You know any longer. Uh, I was doing a traditional comedy-driven morning show uh, that was very popular back in the day. But if I came back and did it now, would anybody listen to it? Is the question. It'll be interesting to see you. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it would be that easy. Um, I think the old listeners would. I don't know if you could get the newer people. But, you know, how long has it been since I've been in San Francisco? I left... 20 years. What? More than that? 20 years. Wait a minute. More than that? I. Let's see here. Well, you, left, you left Live 105 in July of 97. Yes. Uh, July of 97, okay, 97, 107, 17, about 25 years. It's mm. 25 years ago. There are people in San Francisco who don't even know who I am. You know? Yeah, people, people that uh, were born after that. That's right. That's right. You ask anybody who is uh, younger than 27 years old who I am, and they don't know. They, they probably don't know if they're even 27 because you have to become sentient in order to, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it, it really, I mean, nobody remembers me in San Francisco. Come on. You know, they're the old people that you meet up with, you know. You go to comedy shows and they're all using walkers, you know. <laughs> and and they, <laughs> they remember who I am. Hey, how's Alex Bennett? Boy, I wish we had another Alex Bennett program here. And then I would get nothing but old people listening to me. And that's not the kind of demographics that a radio station wants. I, uh, it's, it's like I put up on my website, you know, there's an end to a movie called The Roaring Twenties in which Jimmy Cagney is dead on the steps of a church, uh, and because he's been shot by Humphrey Bogart and, uh, his girlfriend is cradling him in her, in, in her arms. And a cop comes along and says, who was he? And she says, whatever the name of the character was. I can't remember right now. I said, what did he do? And she looks up at the cop and goes, he used to be a big shot. <laughs> I've never seen that. And I always remember that because that's how I, that, that's the quote I have on my Facebook page. I used to be a big shot. <laughs> you know, I mean, people, you know, there are kids out there. Up, coming up today, if I said to them, name the four Beatles, they couldn't do it. You know? And you find that almost impossible to believe, but it's true. They weren't... Oh, I, I know uh, some of the younger comics I, around here, I've talked to some of them, and they didn't know who Dana Carvey was. So. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. No, but that's... How long ago was he on Saturday Night Live? Well, he's 86 to 93... Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So ninety three hundred one one oh three. Fourteen. Thirty six years at, ago. Thirty years ago. Of course. They're not gonna remember Dana Carvey. Why? You know? I mean, uh, I don't and that's not begrudging Dana. He's a very fine comic. You know. And he's still what well, he's still he's got a big podcast right now with David Spade. That's very popular. Yeah. 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 So I mean, he's probably no no more. Oh, isn't he the guy with the podcast? Yeah. So the pod that people don't get uh, 
that fame that people had when there was like three TV networks, that'll never happen again. Well, because you you had well, actually it was four. It was actually four TV networks plus usually an independent station in every market. So there were about five stations. Um, uh, you had uh, you had ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, and then you had the independent station. Mm -hmm. And then Fox came along, and usually Fox. Fox wound up on the independent station. Um, but that's when a crappy sitcom could get 20 million viewers a week. Oh, yeah, and, the, and get canceled. Yeah. And get canceled. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Mork and Mindy, they were getting like 50 million. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. There were huge numbers for any TV yeah. show. Now today, if a TV show gets 3 million, uh, it's considered a success. Yeah, they said yeah, you get 3 million viewers, you can stay on the air. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but back in those days, I mean, hell, uh, the what, what was it they said that was it the the last episode of Mash got 125 million viewers? The so, highest, the, I know it's yes, the highest, most viewed regular program show in history. Was that one? Yeah, February 28th, 1983. Then you go to. Um, the last episode of Seinfeld, and you don't even have close to those numbers, and yet their numbers were huge, mm -hmm. or considered huge. But, um, you know, I mean, the, the numbers they get today are completely different, you know. Uh, and I don't know what you what you can say about it, but it's, 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 it's you know... Um, Everything is so scattered. People used to, I remember people would talk, when I had a day job, people would be talking about the shows that were on TV the night before. Yeah. You know, the movie that I just saw the other day that I actually really liked, Barbie. Oh, really? Yeah. No, that was seen by a lot of people, apparently. It you know made why, a lot of money. You, well, you know why people said, why to make a lot of money? And I'm, was it because it was Barbie and kids went to it? No, what happened was it was actually made for adults. And it had a message, very strong message, one of the most feminist films I've seen in years. Uh, and uh, it, it just, um, it had a message going for it. And so therefore... Adults heard that the coast was clear. You could go see it, and nobody would think you were terrible for seeing it. And then you would see it, and you'd understand why. Because it's really a picture with uh, with uh, some very important messages about feminism, about masculinity, and all of that. And I was amazed when I watched it. You know, and not bad oh. for you know a, a lead character without a vagina. You know, so. <laughs> Well, the movie I saw last week was, speaking of James Cagney, was White Heat, which I... Oh, White Heat. That's a, that's a classic. Yeah. Top of the hill, Ma. Top of the hill. <laughs> Finally made it, Ma. <laughs> Finally made it, Ma. Top of the hill. <laughs> Cagney was amazing. I mean, you know, he barely ever sang and danced in movies, but if he had done only that, he would have been a success. You know, he was terrific. He was an incredible uh -huh. performer. And like, uh, yeah, I read about that movie. He didn't want to do another gangster. He hadn't done, hadn't done one in uh, quite a few years, so he had to talk him into it, and they, uh, he actually kind of rewrote some of the script. And, oh, it's a good film. It's a great film. Yeah. But the thing is, by Cagney, perfect example. In those days, there were some people that went, well, this is my business. I'm an actor. It's my business. And I'm not going to give it up uh, until I'm 65. Then I'm going to retire. And at 65, he retired. And the only reason he went back and made one more movie, which was, do you remember what the one movie was he did later in life? I think it was Ragtime. Very good. The only reason he did that is he had, you know, some medical problems and things like that. And his doctor said, you know what would be good for you? If you went back and did a movie. Now, I don't know <laughs> if that was good doctoring or whether that was somebody who wanted to see Jimmy Cagney act again, you know. 
but he told him go uh, go do a movie so he went and did Ragtime and I mean he was always terrific the last film that he ever did was a film for Billy Wilder and I think one of the funniest comedies I've ever seen I was watched it just the other day one two three um, and it's all about uh, a guy who is the um, uh, head of the Coca-Cola company in Berlin during the Cold War, and uh, the daughter of the head of the Coca-Cola company comes to visit and runs away with a guy from Eastern Germany, <laughs> Eastern Berlin, who's a blazing communist. And now the father's going to come and visit, and he's got to somehow rectify this whole thing. And it it is just one of the it's just one hilarious movie, you know. <laughs> I'll have to see it because I like I, and Tag the, Me is great. And the very ending of it, I don't want to, it's not ruining it for people, is, he, you know, he uh, finally at the end, he goes over to a uh, a big uh, dispensing machine and he put the Coca Cola dispensing machine and he uh, puts in a quarter or dime or whatever and out comes a bottle of Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a very funny movie and it was his last movie before Ragtime, which was maybe 20 years later, something like that. 1981. Yeah. But there's a guy who just, you know, I just, one of the great and one of the most identifiable actors. I mean, how many impressionists don't do an impression of Jimmy <laughs> Cagney? <laughs> you dirty rat, you. You know, I mean, anybody could, you could probably do Jimmy Cagney. Yeah, he, he played a good psychotic. I like. He was great in White Heat. <laughs> oh yeah, no, incredible in White Heat. He had that weird relationship with the mother. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, you know, now that you have the uh, the high speed internet, you know what you can get now. Yeah. You can subscribe to all the streaming services. Oh. You know, like Netflix or Hulu. I have them all. And you know what they've been doing this week? They've all been raising their prices. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, people went to you because you were inexpensive entertainment during COVID. And they relied on you being inexpensive. And now you're, I mean, Hulu, which I get my, all my, I, I cut the cord. I don't get regular TV stations over the air. I get them through Hulu. Just raised my rate seven bucks. A month. So you have the privilege now of subscribing to these people who don't give a good goddamn about you. No, I'll avoid them. But uh, are you thinking of subscribing to any of them? No, not at all. Why? They have no interest. Really? Nothing I want to see, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I can't tell you which one to go to because... They all have their pluses and minuses. The one I like the least is Netflix, but Marjorie loves Netflix because she watches all these telenovelas coming out of Spain. And she's sitting there and they're like, she had, there was one thing, it was a Turkish series that obviously was a Turkish soap opera. And she started watching it. By the time she got to the 150th episode, she realized there were still another 100 to go. Jesus. And she stopped. But I never well, can understand her thinking in that. Some of those shows might hit the worldwide, they might have huge audiences. Well, uh, some of them are, they have some pretty good shows out there. You know, the, I'll tell you the one, oddly enough, the, the uh, streaming service I like the best is Apple TV. It's kind really? of what HBO used to be. I mean, they've, they're they doing some really great shows. HBO sucks now, doesn't it? It's now, it's not called HBO, it's called Max. It's owned by Discovery, and they've completely ruined the whole thing. Because they think that because we liked HBO, we also want to watch, uh, I don't know, Guy Fieri uh, and uh, Hot Foods, you know? <laughs> I, we don't want to watch that, you know. But uh, anyway, I, I suggest uh, Apple Plus has really got some decent, decent stuff. 
So okay. anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Um, yeah. It, 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 I hate to say that because one time I'm going to say I've run out of time here, and the next day I'll be dead. You know. Well, you know, we lost another comic last week. So who do we lose? Geechee guy. Geechee guy. Guy. I hardly knew him. I I don't think ever. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did your show a couple times. Did he really? Uh huh. I don't remember Geechee guy. How old was he? Fifty nine. What? Yeah. Oh God! All these people are dying around me. I know. Don't you go. I, I have so few friends left. <laughs> really? It's true. When I hear my friends die that are younger than me, it makes me wonder. And uh, I guess he had his hell of record. He told 676 jokes in one hour. Wow. Yeah, he was all one-liners. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. i got to kick you off. Okay. Uh, uh, but we'll see you again uh, next week, huh? See you next week. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Larry Bubbles Brown. Our old friend, Larry Bubbles, and uh, good for him. Good having him on, and uh, we'll see if maybe you'll get to see him soon because maybe we can get things going for him so that he can he can do the show here uh on you know zoom uh and uh but uh you know for years i I've, all i've ever done is uh is show um where is it this see that's what i show yeah uh, i would love to be able to uh really show him in the flesh okay so hopefully we'll be doing it well we have a lot of people trying to get on tonight where were they last night uh last night i went on and Monday, thursdays are a little slow sometimes they, they they surprise me and they're exceedingly fast and i uh, i i did uh, um uh uh, so I went on last night, and it was just me. Nobody. Nobody. And then Alan called, which was very nice uh, of Alan to do. And then my good friend um, uh, Don Geller called. And surprisingly, uh, with uh, only the three of us, uh, it was, I think, a, a great uh, hour of, uh, of uh, podcasting. I mean, we had a good time. And uh, I thank them for calling me when nobody else would. And I know everybody has an excuse, yeah, right, you know. Oh, I, uh, the 49ers were on, and, uh, you know, th- that's what most people said was happening, is there was the, uh, the uh, they were on. But, uh, you know, I, I've often said this, and I've often threatened this, that I, I, it's on nights like that that I begin to wonder whether it's worth it. Uh, it became worth it last night because the people I had on, I mean, I could probably do an hour with just uh, Don Geller. Um, a Giller. <laughs> what is with me? Uh, Don Giller. Uh, I could have done an hour with him. You know, he's just funny and he's fascinating. And I got a lot of people who... Uh, wrote in and said, uh, hey, you know, last night's show was terrific. You should do more of those. Just allow a couple of people on and have a decent little conversation. And I, I went, well, yeah, that's a possibility too. I'm considering seven, uh, several possibilities, but we'll, we'll get into that at another date. Okay, well, let's, um, let's um, bring all these people in who want to be on here, uh, and uh, they're popping in like crazy. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, Jeff, and uh, there's Tommy Amaguchi. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow, Tom. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Kevin is here, and Josh is here, and Charlie mm-hmm. is here, and Brian is... Are you, in your, Are you in your car? Are you in your car? Yeah, I'm driving... But I, I saw your show last night, so I wanted to make sure at least somebody called. 
So you figured you'd do it in the dark? <laughs> oh, it would have been very noisy. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm coming home from Lodi. I uh, had uh, presentations to do tonight, so going to get Adrian right now and then going home. Wait a minute, you have a presentation to do tonight? No, a lot, yeah, tonight and last night in Lodi, our, our factory up there, I had to do uh, yeah, all hands meetings. So. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm coming home from Lodi now. So I was in, in Lodi last night doing presentations. That's why I couldn't call. You mean work is more important than me? <laughs> right, so. Oh, dear. Well, I, I have to balance the check that you send me and their check, and it's close. Yeah. Well, you know. Uh, we'll it's keep that 58 Buick that's important. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, um, hello to uh, uh, Alan. Thank you for being here last night. You're welcome. And uh, hello, Ray. And uh, let's see here. I guess I've said hello to everybody that I should be saying hello to. Um, Are you oh, angry at me? Hmm? I was gone. I was missed. <laughs> Where were you? Where were you? I, w I am in Massachusetts right now. Oh, right. right. And I tried to get on, but I had all kinds of problems. Now, you go on. <laughs> hey, listen, you have, uh, you have problems when you're just at home, okay? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I sat on uh, Tuesday's show for about... 20 minutes until I realized you weren't having a show. So where were you? Well, I, I put uh, I put a thing up saying that I was. Oh, I didn't see it. You didn't send me a message. Come on, what's up? <laughs> well, oh. I, I put it up on Facebook. I figure that's where everybody will go. See it. If Kevin, the, I saw people waiting. Wait a minute. He said Tuesday's show. You now have a show on Tuesday. Oh, Wednesday. Oh, 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 okay. I don't know what day it is. I, I can't figure out what day it is. Uh, Join the club, Kevin. Yeah, yep. we're joining the uh, Senior Plus. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, I, uh, I let me do what Jeff is doing here. here. Rocking back and forth? No. Uh, anyway, um, uh, what happened uh, was that I, uh, I have a uh, supplier, GoDaddy, who supplies me with my, uh, you know, um, Drugs. Huh? My drugs. Yeah. <laughs> drugs? <laughs> My mind's just been crap the last couple of days. Um, Your website. No, this, yeah, it, that's where I put my website. And I also, a lot of the programs and stuff, when you, when you click on a thing on my Facebook page and you want to listen to a show, the, it's being fed from GoDaddy, okay? And the way I put that stuff on GoDaddy is I use a thing called FileZilla and it takes it and it brings up uh, the uh, server at GoDaddy and then I just move everything over, you know. Well, all of a sudden about, uh, oh, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, I suddenly realize it's not working. And they had sent me a notification a couple of days, early, uh, a couple of weeks ago that they were gonna be doing some work and we may be off for a short time. Okay, um, and uh, so th that's uh, that's what I figured it would be. Then I got a notification that says the completion of your migration over to this other thing has been done. Here's your new uh, uh, address because there's a, a f uh, you know an address you have to put in, and uh, uh, have fun, whatever. All right. But I go on and nothing's working, and I put in the new numbers. And that isn't working. Nothing's working. So I call GoDaddy, and the guy there says, oh, uh, you won't be able to go onto your site for about 24 hours uh, because they're doing all this work of migration. I said, they said it was all, what, what part of this note that I got that's saying that it's been completed, don't you understand? I said, and how dare you people do this because there, there are people that have businesses and so on and so yeah. forth that rely on being able to use your servers, okay? And being able to communicate with your servers. And are they supposed to be out of business for 24 hours? 
I said, that's ter it's terrible. Usually what most companies do is about two o'clock in the morning, they do that work they gotta do and do those changes because they figure it's gonna have the least impact on people. And then the next day, everything's gonna be fine, you know? Well, this went on for 24 hours. And I was just going insane. And nobody was giving me the same information. One said, it won't be till t 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Another one said, it won't be till eight o'clock tomorrow night. Somebody said it won't be till 10 o'clock this morning. I mean, nobody over uh, GoDaddy knew what was happening. So uh, that, that's what that was all about. And I could, there was, I could have done a show. I could have put it up on, uh, on, I could have made it go on YouTube and I could have somehow done a workaround and even posted the shows. But I was so exhausted from all of this, I just said to hell with it, you know. If I can't do it in an easy manner, I'm not gonna do it at all. So I didn't go on on, for, on, on uh, Wednesday, which, you know, who cares? Nobody was gonna call anyway. So you I know, was on, I was waiting. You, I was waiting. You, uh, <laughs> I, I got on, I, I was so proud because I got upstairs and I went, okay, I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna be in the waiting room. And I'm never in the waiting room. I have to run upstairs anyway to get on and I'm usually five, ten minutes late, and I went, oh, okay, I'm on. I'm sitting well, there. Well, I'll waiting, tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, okay, I will do a special show next Tuesday for just you. Oh, yeah, yeah and I'll sit the there and kick too. my nose for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emails would be nice. Uh, oh, I'm going to send an email to all of you? We need, yeah. we need, a, we need a, yeah, we need a gab a that email, lasts. Yeah. You want to get an assistant or something. Yeah. yeah, your assistant can send them out. Yeah, right. That's right, Jeff. I agree. Well, I mean, I could start a, uh, you know, a list of people that just hear, that get the information, you know, when that happens. Uh, but it just, you know, it was just so frustrating. It was that and uh, let's see, what else wasn't working? Somebody else did something that wasn't working. And then today, today Marjorie has been yelling at me. I get, when I fell, I got these two massive sores on my uh, knee from where I it hit the pavement. And um, one of them has been coming along very nicely, but the other one's kind of weird. It's kind of having a hard time clearing itself up. So today I went to a um, one of these uh, clinics, you know, one of these uh, ur urgent care facilities uh, that they have because I, I figure I'm not going to call my doctor he'll tell me well I don't have an appointment till next Wednesday or so something July. <laughs> or, or, or next yeah. July yeah so I go to this place when I've got some little thing like that right and it's a pretty ugly looking sore but I mean it's it just has had a hard time I think it probably was deeper than the other one so I went there and the guy looked at it and he said, ah, it's a little infected, so we'll give you an antibiotic. And if that doesn't clear it up, come back and see me, but I think that'll do it, you know. So I'm now taking doxycycline, which I told him, I said, have you got anything else? He says, not really, that's the best thing for this. I said, well, the reason I don't want doxycycline is it makes my ass itch, and it does. It just, I, all of a sudden I get this, like, I've got to, like, go get one of those, you know, those uh, uh, back scratchers and just permanently put it in my ass, you know, while That's I'm true. using this drug. But anyway, so we have, the, is that a magic trick? Uh, <laughs> no, it's a back scratcher. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I just decided uh, that, uh, you know, that some, I went down there today, and that was the big thing. I walked um, almost two miles today. Uh -oh. Yeah, I oh, thought right. I was going to die, but I, I haven't walked that much in months, okay? And then we've been dealing with the landlord this week, and we've been dealing with some other stuff, too. It's just that everything has like been a frustration. And uh, to have that happen with uh, GoDaddy, yeah, that was just too much for me. Yeah, so Anyway, I, I apologize for not doing a show on Wednesday, um, but uh, I don't apologize for Thursday because I had two people who really, well, did a show with me. 
and uh, uh, if you go back and listen to it, it's not a bad, not a bad hour, you know. So anyway, I ah. watched it. You watch it? You like it? Yeah, I was guilted into watching it. But you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to remember, I'm I'm like a Jewish mother. I learned from a Jewish mother. That's right. And I felt like a Jewish kid. You, you know. Uh, <laughs> He had more important shit to do than listen to your show last night. Whoa. Like go to a football game. You That's know? right. The night I recorded the football game. Put me in Gabnet does, jail for a game. All that does is glorify violence and objectify women. Oh, jeez. You know, he's, and, he's, and, and did guess you, he's going to the football and, game next week. <laughs> and did you, see, did you see the fights? Did you see the fight of 49er fans fighting 49er fans yeah, in the stands? Girls, girls ripping off wigs. Ripping their wigs. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I have no... I don't understand why a, a, a regular, you know, a football team fan, they, they, they like the same team and they fight each other. It's, it's, I, I, that I, don't, I don't understand. In the section below us, they were yelling at each other. I'm going, geez, are you kidding me? When you're winning like by so the Philly much, fans and they got their own jail. Ass. I don't What's understand why that? why when a, te- <laughs> when a team okay, uh, wins the Super Bowl, uh, that night everybody goes downtown and tears the whole town apart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I never could understand that. There's no reason to tear the town apart. You know. We're starting to get like Philly and have to get our own jail. <laughs> grease, grease your poles. San Francisco greases the poles, but that's a different pole they grease. <laughs> <laughs> well, I different just, you know, too. I, uh, and, and, uh, but you see, you've got to understand the reason you're getting this violence at, at football games, look at football. I mean, the violence is out there on the field. And apparently it's gotten to the point where it's no longer a catharsis for people. It's a... Uh, it's an incentive for them to do exactly the same thing. So, you know. What? Hmm? Spartacus Coliseum, you know. D- did the Niners win? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. It was a pretty boring game, really. I got COVID. I have COVID again. Oh, Jesus, right? Get, get off the get off the te- get off the, the show then, man. Wear a mask. <laughs> get off the show when I'm gonna <laughs> can, can pollute you- all of you. Can you put a mask on your camera there? Cough. Well, how many times have you had it? Twice. Uh, oh, really? This oh. time I'm pretty sick. Oh. But I got the Pax Lovid. Oh, then oh. you'll be fine within 24 hours. Oh, good. Yo, that Pax Lovid really knocks it out fast. Uh, good. Yeah. yeah. Tastes now, terrible. What? Tastes terrible. Well, I know. It, I have this it, taste in my mouth now. Yeah, yeah. You got that taste in your mouth. So what? Like a metallic. I don't give a so shit. So what? I, I've already. Let I me, have to tell you. I only took it a couple hours ago. I think I'm starting to already feel a little better. Is that possible? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Uh, but I mean, you know, so so you get a bad taste in your mouth. You say to yourself, I don't care. "Let me see. I could either have a bad taste in my mouth or, or die. potentially die." <laughs> yeah. Could, yeah. Or you could well, be intubated in the hospital. Yeah, Alex. Alex. Yeah. Uh, there's two. Actually, two things that real. Actually, one thing that really has got me irritated when I had to take back COVID. I've had COVID twice too. Fortunately, they were both mild. But I only take two prescription drugs. I take uh, a statin drug for my uh, cholesterol, and I take uh, another drug to shrink my prostate. And while I was on Paxlovid, I couldn't take either of them. It just but, really annoyed yes, me. Uh, you have to stop wow. taking the statin while you're taking the Paxlovid, but the Paxlovid right. is only a five-day course. Yeah. So uh, then, then you can go right back on the statin. Yeah, but and still, I, it's I, I don't know what the reason is. The statin may not allow the Paxlovid to have the full effect it's supposed to have or just might be something else i don't know but my doctor when first when i first got paxlovid the first time um he uh, he said to me uh t- stop taking the statin also he because i have kidney it's like you know kidney problems as, as aging will do it's not they're not terrible or whatever but what they, <laughs> look who's there yeah. <laughs> How come you're in the dark, Brian? He's driving. <laughs> oh. Good. 
He, no kid, crash. he kidnapped that. <laughs> he kidnapped that little girl. That's what he did. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, no, but what, where was I? I was talking about the. Oh yeah, about Pat Slobin. Pat and. Yeah. Um, they they t just you know they oh with the kidneys they get they only give you part of the Paxlovid. There's like you know two elements to it, and they leave one element. There's a there's a there are two versions of it, and one of it is a version if you have kid any kind of kidney problems. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah I take three pills, like two of one kind. Yeah, or I one only take I only take two. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, also, he takes six because it's it's three in the morning and three in the evening. No, I well, mean at, 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 each, at one time. At, each, yeah, at one, one time, time, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think thirteen. Originally, Count when they when, originally when they first did this, they just kind of like the pharmacist would remove that third pill. Now they have like packs that are just for people who have uh, kidney problems and so on and so forth. So uh, that that works. First time my doctor gave it to me. The second time, um, I was fortunate enough to be visited here by my good friend Buddy Love and his wife, he happens to be a doctor. And I went and I like took my temperature and it was up a little bit, so I decided to take a, a, a what do you call it test, a, a, a COVID test, and I it said I had COVID, and she said to me, "Don't get near me." You know, immediately put on here. Put on this mask. She had masks in her in her purse. He said, here, have a mask. Uh, and uh, then she said, uh, "I'll uh, ca I'll call your pharmacist and I'll get you Paxlovid." So I actually, when you know that old saying, "Is there a doctor in the house?" Yes, there was, <laughs> uh, and it was a it was a real pleasure. And, and it wasn't a chiropractor. And again, <laughs> God. again, I took the Paxlovid, and within 24 hours, I mean, I wasn't feeling well that night either. Mm. So oh. I was feeling it. Uh, oh man! But I didn't, I didn't suspect that it was COVID. And then uh, uh, she gave that to me, and within uh, less than 24 hours, I was fine. You know. I went through hell last night. Really? I got, I, oh, I could not sleep. I was getting up every five minutes to go to the that, bathroom. That, that happened to me. Yeah. I had yeah. I had pain everywhere, so I, said, so I took the test at like three in the morning, and it it got positive within like five seconds, like boom, you know, solid red Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I, I'm feeling better already. I can't. You no, know, the the Paxlovid really knocks it out. Now there's some people who say, oh, Paxlovid's terrible for you, and it's not That's the what my answer. wife is saying. Yeah. yeah, but it works, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, game changer. Yeah, and yeah. also, you know, you got everything's a risk, but you're going to take a risk not taking it too, right? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The risk you go to the hospital and die. Especially if you're <laughs> over sixty, I think. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, in case you're listening, um, uh, jerks over <sighs> at, uh, at YouTube, we are not giving medical advice here. We're just <laughs> talking <laughs> about our our <laughs> experiences. <laughs> Uh, with COVID, okay? Uh, I guess I should play a doctor on TV. I'm not a real doctor. I should put a mask on so I don't infect all yeah. of you. <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, you. Thank you, Ray. That it looked like it. Ray got Tony. Look, he's missing hair on top of. His Let head. me just say so everybody knows who's listening, including the jerks over at YouTube. Uh, <laughs> that what I'm saying is is that. Uh, Personal it, experience. It, 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 these are personal experiences of people and, and mm -hmm. what they went through when they had COVID. Uh, uh, you've had it three times, uh, twice. Uh, yeah. Uh, th three of us have had it twice here. Anybody else had it? Uh, you had it, right, Jeff? Yeah, I have a quasi number of it, yeah. which I'm not sure if I really got it. But yeah. You know what I, I think? The, I think the problem I took is positive. Yeah, I just think we're not taking. COVID seriously enough anymore. Yep. I agree. I didn't. I should I was on a plane again and I didn't wear a mask. No. You know. That's... I mean, I was in a I was in Thanks a, for sharing with everybody on the airplane. I was in that urgent care place Well, today. I think someone That's shared it. Probably where you got it. Yeah. Someone shared it with me. I wasn't symptomatic when I got in the airplane. Right. Well, but I mean, we we we're, we're so cavalier about it now. Now, granted, granted mm. There is, you know, things like Paxlovid and and so forth, uh, and it's not probably as strong a strain as the one that originally hit. 
So with those differences, uh, it's, a, it's a little easier, but still, mm -hmm. you should take it as seriously as we did originally. Uh, we should. I just saw a commercial on TV today that uh, said that it's still the third or fourth leading cause of death in the United States, COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's actually, you have a higher chance of dying from COVID than of dying in a car wreck. Yeah. So we should be wearing masks in crowds for sure. You know, it would be terrible. Somebody that... told you that earlier today, didn't they, Ray? Yeah, well, yes, they did. But I think it would yeah. be terrible. Ray, why did you wait so long to tell me? Why didn't you tell me before <laughs> no. I got the damn COVID? I, think... I told you last time you had COVID, but that's okay. But that was I... a year ago. I have a short memory. Yeah, but I, I think it would be even worse to have COVID <laughs> and be in a car crash. So, uh, you know. Uh, but anyway, if you're listening, YouTube, I, we're not saying anything about, you know, we're bad medicine or anything like that. We're just talking about our experiences with it and the fact that people should probably still wear masks when they're in crowded situations. And, uh, you know. But yet they'll listen to Rand Paul who gives up medical advice. Nothing yeah, we yeah. say is medical information. And if you are having a problem or not feeling well, be sure to contact your doctor. That's right. That's right. Or call right. 911. But that's why I have a great fear about talking about this because they dinged me. Okay, this this really got me. They dinged me for a show I did two years ago. Okay, I remember they, that. They didn't get to me till two years later, <laughs> and they said, "Oh well, on this one you were giving out bad medical advice." So I went back and I listened to the show that they were talking about, and the show they were talking about. <laughs> was uh, this, uh, what's his name from? Don. Don, uh, not Geller, but uh, Giller rather, but uh, Don, uh, I'm trying to remember. Pardo. Well, anyway. Uh, Don he, Larkin. Yeah, Don Larkin. He was talking about what Tucker Carlson was saying about uh, COVID. And he was saying. Panning your testicles. And, we all, oh. and then we all agreed it was a terribly irresponsible statement and how could he say something like that? And YouTube dings me because we were giving out bad advice. And he was simply repeating what Tucker Carlson had said in order to go to the second point that how terrible Tucker Carlson yeah, was in dealing with bad this. advice. <laughs> yeah. So, and we, we went on to say what bad advice it was. So then I said, well, I want you to go back and listen to this. And I, want, I appealed it. And they listened. They said, it, you still said that. <laughs> well, all they did, what happened is they have these algorithms that listen to shows. When they hear something, they flag it, yeah. okay? Now, over at YouTube, these guys are so lazy, okay, that they just listened to what was flagged. So they heard that portion where, where he was talking about what Tucker Carlson had said. And so when I appealed it, they went back and again, they only listened to the flagged portion. They didn't listen to what came before it, and they didn't listen to what came after it. And mm -hmm. and uh, I found uh, that was really bothered me. And so I I now have a warning. Okay, so I had to take this little test, and now I pass the test, and I have to wait three months. And if I don't say anything bad that would raise a problem. Uh, uh, they will wipe it off my record. Oh, my oh God. thank you so much, YouTube. You know, mm. I really appreciate it. You know, yeah, I mean, it's so ridiculous. You should broadcast on Pornhub instead. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what bothers me about. Yeah, right. I'll tell you what bothers me about it most of all is that it really. Okay, so somebody has a bad opinion, and they're giving out bad medical advice. They shouldn't be. That's terrible. But the fact of the matter is, who are they to say what's good medical advice and what's bad medical advice? They have no idea. They have no idea. Yeah. You know, it's all just based on politics. It's all based on politics, exactly. Uh, and, uh, you know, I agree. I will not allow anyone. The thing that made me so mad about it was, uh, you know how assiduous I am about uh, not letting people say things medical about medicine. You know, Alan, I've, I've called you on it, you know, that we shouldn't be giving out any medical advice here because we're not doctors. If I had a doctor sitting here, we'd listen to the doctor. 
you know. Some people, some people have a lot of knowledge, though, and when it comes to that. So. Well, no, it could well be, but you're not a doctor. I don't, yeah. I don't claim to be. A and, doctor. and so you know how how tough I've been in this area. So then to no, get, I don't, I don't to, mind to, to you're, get you're, to get simple. dinged for that, just piss the living daylights out of me. I know. You know. And when, it, when that happened, to you Phil told me the story, and I thought, oh. It's got to be about me, and it wasn't. It was no, about John Arkin. No, and, I thought, oh, and it was something that happened two years earlier. Jesus. I mean, who gives a diddly fuck about two years earlier? You know, but the time the they backlog. should the time they should go after me is right after it's happened. So someone might have reported it, like somebody who didn't like what you said about Tucker Carlson. That's or probably something. what happened. Yeah. Probably. No, mega. no, I don't think so. I think this uh, was this was them and their algorithm. You see, uh, they're going back. And they're listening to stuff in the past to get people for it now because what? it's not because of the politics of the times. Two years <laughs> ago, that didn't matter, right. you know. But today, it does. And I agree. If I do it today, ding me. If I did it last night, ding me. Then I know what I did. But I had to go back and actually find the program, <laughs> listen to the whole goddamn thing to find out what it was. That's silly. Or at least that I suspected it was. They said it was bad medical advice or something like that. But Next time you should get your advice from <clears throat> Lauren Boebert. <laughs> oh, I got a problem with Lauren Boebert. Uh, oh, uh, we all? Uh, yeah, yeah, but is it the same problem I have with her? Does she have to be so goddamn hot? I know. I think she used to be a hooker or something like that. Uh, That's she, why he was broadcaster born. hooker. What's the difference? Yeah. Republican. What's I mean, the was difference? Wasn't there something about it? like years ago, like when she was in her twenties, she was a, a escort. Supposedly, yeah. 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 Which is fine. I don't care, but yeah, she's no, such a hypocrite. I mean, again, well, now that she's a little bit older, she's in the Republican Party. She's hey, an escort. No, wait a minute. Again, That's, there's nothing wrong with her being a no. hooker. In fact, that recommends her to me. But you she's know, a hypocrite, but, though. But she's yeah, a, yeah. Well, what? Wait a minute. Has she gone out after hookers? Is the question? No, <laughs> no. But she's telling people what their family values should yeah, be family against values. abortion, and she's like doesn't want kids to be exposed to trans people and all this shit. And she's in there in a in a musical, uh, giving the guy jerking the guy off. Oh, I'm not. Can't say that. Sorry. Hey, Doing you, you, whatever. You, you to the can guy. say it. And, you know. Oh. They'll well, just, it just cost you twenty cents or something. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, it's just—it's so hypocritical to me. I wouldn't care. It's just that she's—it's just—it's just exemplary of these of these MAGA people. They're just full of crap. Yeah, well, it's like Christy Nome. Family values. Well, I mean, they—they're all yelling about family values, and yet the guy they're all following has no family values at all. <laughs> You know, you no, know, and they treat him like he's the second coming of Jesus Christ. But he has no, he has no morality at all. You yeah. know, and and yet they follow him. Uh, it's, it's a cult, huh? Yeah. It's cultish. Oh, yes. oh, there's no question about it. It's not, a, it's not cultish. Look, it's not a cult. It's just cultish. You pull like aside, it's the you behavior. Pull, you pull aside any of these Republicans and ask them in private what they think, and they'll tell you. It's, Trump is a piece of crap. Oh, the oh yeah, the politicians. I'm talking okay. about the people on the street. Oh, the people on the street. The thing is, they don't understand that Trump isn't for them. That's I know. You know, he tries right. to act. It's it, it makes me want to vomit when I see him try to be one of the people. You know, I keep saying, I'm all these things they're coming after me for. I'm doing it for you. Yeah. What, what, what you're doing it for them? Well, anyway, listen, today they got a Democrat, okay? So, oh, um, it is. <laughs> hmm? How about that, huh? Yeah. No, he's from New Jersey. He's from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the guy they impeached? No, uh, no, 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 they just charged him. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, he was yeah. indicted, yeah. Him oh. and his wife. Yeah. Um, what uh, <clears throat> it's it's a whole bunch of charges uh, that have to do with him taking money and from gold. foreign governments, gold oh, bars, yeah. gold, gold bars, gold yeah. bars, and, and mortgage money. Yeah, Josh sent me that article this morning. <clears throat> yeah, pretty. 
hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars a gold bar, plus a uh, what was it a BM, was it a B, what was it, a Jaguar BMW what was the car I'm trying to remember what car it was. Uh, I don't remember what car it was but he's paying his mortgage and everything else yeah yeah so I mean um, and Menendez was you know tried once before and it was a hung jury so they just didn't do it try yeah. it again um, so I guess they just kept trying and they figured wow. we got him this time you know. <laughs> And he had a half a million dollars in well, cash. Well, listen, if I were Menendez, and this is definitely uh, uh, important for people to understand, that he's got to be a moron because yeah. he got busted. He yeah. went on trial. He skated uh, by the skin of his teeth. And at that point, he should have said, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. But no, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know. That's what amazes me about all of these people who yeah. keep doing the same stuff over again. And like, are they really? Are you really want to sacrifice your life for that? Seriously? Well, look at Trump with his phone call to Zelensky. Uh, exactly. Him impeached. So what does he do? He makes a phone call to, to the sec Secretary of State of of, of uh, Georgia. Perfect. Same kind of thing. Well, here's the, the part. most perfect phone call. I'll tell you something. <laughs> He is, I think, and I'm saying this to all you Republicans out there who think he's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. That I'm, he's one of the stupidest men on the planet. Because he goes on with, um, uh, what's her name over there, on Meet the Press. Yeah. Um, oh, God, that was hilarious. Um, and, and by the way, she did a very good job. Yeah, it's she a, cornered it. It's yeah. his first, her first time on that show, hosting that show. Um, I'm trying to remember her name right now offhand. Hey there. She's cute. Kristen too, Welker. Uh, oh, she, That's why he stayed. She was terrific. But what she did is she got him to say something that's going to come back to haunt him big time. Yeah. I mean, over at the Justice Department, or they were probably sitting there going, high fiving each other when he said, Oh, well, I'm responsible for all of it, all of this stuff. <laughs> what? What a total idiot. What? <laughs> Are you all this, guy is his it? Own, this guy's his own worst enemy. He could have blamed it on the lawyers. Now he can't. No. He can't. He, he, it's like he thinks he can say anything, and it's not going to come back to bite him in the ass. That alone, playing that clip to even a people who are pro-Trump on a jury will get him convicted. I mean, he's an idiot. He's a moron. People find, I mean, this guy, is, it, look how far ahead he is now. But he's ahead of Biden in some polls right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what are we going to do about Biden? You know, if Biden were decent, I think he would not run. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. He said he wasn't going to run for a second term. I mean, I think that I would agree. I know that Tom probably disagrees with what I just I said. Definitely disagree. Huh? <laughs> huh? Definitely disagree. Why do you disagree with what I've said? Because he he does have. Look, the biggest negative he has is his age, and I'll tell you why. Because I even know that at my age of eighty three, I could be dead next week. You know. It's just the way things are at this age. And I think people are thinking, well, you know, he maybe could die tomorrow. And then what do we do? We've got, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? <laughs> what? Kamala. 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 Uh, Kamala. Uh, Kamala. I rest Harris. my point. Kamala Harris. Sleepy Kamala. But Kamala Harris. and. She just isn't Atlanta. a good idea at all. I mean, but he's going to run her as his vice president. He should go out and get somebody who will sit there and go, okay, I feel it's safe now. We can vote for him because if anything happens to him, this is the replacement. Okay. Gen Z loves her. Huh? Gen Z loves her. She goes to college campuses and she gets treated like a rock star. I don't yeah. think she's as bad as you think. I just think, I think, um, you just get yeah, the vice presidents always get the short into everything except for Dick Cheney because he ran everything. You get rid of her, you she, might as well kiss the young vote off. But they'll never yeah. go out to the polls, and Trump will win. Good point. Oh, you Good mean point. to say that he couldn't come up with somebody else that would appeal to that same crowd? 
Well, who is it going to be? Give me an no. alternative. Gavin Newsom. It would. It would be. It would be chaos. It would be absolute chaos to totally throw the whole thing up and start from scratch. No, yeah. it wouldn't work. You no, know? But I'm saying he should have... And, and I, I said this before last week. It, it comes down to a lot of the objections to, to Kamala Harris is she's a black... She's black no. and she's a woman. But look, yeah. you you know that, that, that would, those two Nothing factors would never bother me, okay? But I just don't think she's the person I would like to see be president of the United States. I don't think she has... The, the skill set, okay? I, I got to tell you, Biden has the skill set. Uh, uh, more than that, uh, 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 Hillary Clinton had the largest amount of skill sets to be president of the United States. But she doesn't. And uh, I think there are even some questions, and you can answer this to me, people in California. She wasn't even considered a good district attorney. You know? I never heard that. Yeah. Well, I've never heard that. I heard, heard that many. after she became vice president. I didn't hear it while she was the district attorney. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it while. Well, she was here's the my question: attorney. What happens in uh, the next, not this election, the one after that? I don't know if I'll be around for it. I hope I am. Uh, Gavin Newsom. Gavin will Newsom run. is thinking of running. Yeah, but who else would probably run? Um, Chelsea Clinton. No. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Governor of uh, Illinois is pretty good. No, no, but Kamala Harris is definitely going to try to run. That's uh, yeah. what a vice president does. Right. Now, what was the relationship between Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris, at least by okay. rumor? Well, they worked, at, they worked out a deal that one would run for governor and the other would run for Senate. Yeah. That's the deal they worked mm -hmm. out. But what, yeah, other, what other kind of relationship did they have with each other? I don't know what other kind of relationship they had. I think you tell had, me. Uh, you tell she, me. She's married, and he'll do anybody. It was a Lauren <laughs> Boebert sort of relationship. Okay. What? Well, yeah. Well, I haven't heard anything like that. I haven't heard that either. You I hadn't heard, heard that. I haven't heard of Willie Brown, but I hadn't heard. Well, I had. Yeah, I heard about her and Willie Brown. Yeah. yeah. Well, Willie she, Brown. Did she dated yeah. Willie Brown. Willie Brown. He's dated everybody, and he brags about right. it. So you know, the he's Will like the Willie, Trump of dating. Willie Brown is one of the biggest crooks in politics. Oh hell yeah! So yeah. how she could, uh, well, you know, Maybe you know, not. you know, one time in, in 1979, I was walking down Market Street, and Will, and they used to have these blue parking spaces for cops, and Willie Brown pulled up in his Ferrari, parked on the blue spot, got out, and like walked away. Like it's. It's automatic tow, but he knew no one was going to tow his car. <laughs> I mean, this is when he was state, you know. Uh, well, the, I, I, the I told current. you the story about the time that I, you know, that I decided that <clears throat> there was a big, there was a big homeless problem in San Francisco. Oh, uh, it, it, there was a homeless problem oh. in San Francisco? Yeah. Um, and the homeless problem then was that they were all hanging out in the plaza in front of City Hall. If you may remember that whole thing, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, they were, and dope. they were. Well, they still are. I was just yeah. up there. They're all over. And they the place were sleeping there. in the streets, and they were doing yeah. this and that. So I got a hold of Willie Brown, and I said, "Look, you know what we'd like to do? We'd like to go down, do a live show from the plaza in front of City Hall, and do it as a uh, as a, uh, a question and an answer thing, with you sitting there." answering the questions of people who are homeless, okay? In other words, a, a, you know, a, 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 what could we call it? A town hall, if, that, if you will, uh, for, for homeless people. And he said, great idea. Set it up and I'll be there. Mm -hmm. So we did everything. We had, it's no, it was no easy thing in those days. He had to go run a, a line into the plaza and then he had to set up the mics and he had to, you know, so we, we, we're gonna go do the show. He shows up, okay? Stays for five minutes and leaves. <laughs> that's Willie Brown, yeah. you know? And that's why I think he's a piece of crap because this was an issue that was very important and he wasn't willing to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. They're, Good they're, thing he's not running. Gee, now we can see uh, Brian. What, is he like 90 lights, now? We can see Brian because there are lights in his car, yeah. and we see, see the little girl he's kidnapped. Uh, <laughs> You know, he didn't. He doesn't <laughs> take care of the homeless, and neither does the present mayor. <laughs> no. There's a homeless problem still in San Francisco, isn't there, Ray? Oh, my God. It's in, or, in Oakland and Berkeley and San Jose. Yeah. I think all over I think, Texas. I think we're going to move them all to Palo Alto, so just hang on. We have, like, three. Yeah. Hey, Adrian. No, we have them, but they live in campers. Let me so. just ask Adrian. Adrian, how are you, Adrian? Are you Okay. Splendid. Oh, what? What do you oh, have there? Of course, she's okay. She's got ice cream. Oh wow! Yeah. You get, wow. What, what is that? What? I, I don't, can't hear you. That Daddy spoils her. That's why. No, Daddy wants sure, her to stay. Dad. Wants her to stay awake all night, amped on sugar. Yeah, because uh, the Japan Grand Prix uh, Formula One race is at 11 p.m. tonight, so she wants to stay up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ah, what thing. channel? What well, channel is well, it on? But where did you get uh, that? Oh, oh, you just ESPN thingy. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, you just pulled yeah. into a food place. Yeah, we're almost home, so she's really hungry. So. What? Wow, he's a good dad. Oh, he's the Thank best. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs. Why do you laugh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Her mom. Her mom. Her mom doesn't think so. <laughs> her, her mom doesn't think what? No, uh, her mom. Her mom doesn't think I'm a good dad. Oh, but that's okay. Because he gives her an ice cream at eight o'clock at night. There's no way. There's there's no way you can't be a great dad because you got you. Became a dad later in life. Yeah. Daddy, where's the straw? I don't know. Uh, Stick the bag. I was. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 no, but I, you know, when I was, I, I always thought that it's good to have. It's, you know, I mean, it's good to have money, but it's good to have things in life because then, you know, you, you're able to encourage and motivate your kids. Yeah. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, so I, I'm I'm happy for that because then I can provide for her like her dance stuff, you know, and she really appreciates that, and so she does really good in school. She's very advanced uh, in her class. So, yeah, that's because you're a good dad. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. No one's perfect, Dad. You know. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna make your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Um, Josh, anything floating your boat lately? Nothing in particular. Yeah. Yeah, I do think the Menendez thing is a little comical. I mean, I mm -hmm. they should probably take some steps to, you know, get him get him removed from anything important. I know they can't really just probably up and remove him from the Senate, and they won't do that because they'll say he's accused in a trial and all that. And I get it, but I don't have too much sympathy for people who are, you know twice indicted for the pretty much the same crimes and when you're a public official and those crimes include, include you know well my qu my, my question is the uh, the governor of uh, New Jersey yeah. today asked him to resign well I mean he probably should and you know I usually don't say that kind of stuff but I mean he's a clown and I'm tired of him you know and the Democratic Party should do the right thing you know well, Republicans you know, won't let him Fill yeah. that seat on his committees, right? Oh, yeah, they, they could definitely do things within their power, and that's what they should do. I mean, they can't force him to resign and things like that, but they could, they can, you know, they can make his life miserable, and that's that's probably what they should do. I mean, he brought it on himself, and look, I want to see Trump held to account, and they certainly want to see Trump held to account, and that's fine, and he should be too and i understand that it's got to run its course with the law and all that again that's fine but look he's a he's a clown within their party and they do, need to do what they can do to handle it you do know? you think do you think it was right of the governor to ask him to resign because i mean first yeah, of all he know. hasn't been found guilty of anything no he hadn't you know no, uh, and don't but he's, he's he's like if this was the first time, I think I could take a bit of a different stance. But it's not, and I mean, you know, I was surprised the first time around that he got away with it. 
and they sort of just forgot all about it. My and question got him is, right back out on the national TV shows a few weeks later, talking we, the talk. We don't have anybody here from New Jersey. Uh, I was born in New Jersey. What? I was born in New Jersey. Well, oh, well, my, that explains a lot. <laughs> my question would be, though, okay, he's a crook. Okay, let's say he's a crook, but has he done a good job as senator and and done good by his state? Is the other question that has to be asked, and they're not necessarily the same, you know, same question. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I've never been a big fan of him to begin with, but, I, you know, I really don't care. I mean, I, I don't care if, you know, people think Trump did a nice job. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, even, you know, if you think that he mm-hmm. did, you know, oh, I love some of the things that he did, so I'll, you know, not worry about some of the... the legal matters or whatever i i just don't you know we don't have any any we shouldn't have any tolerance for this i i should say and it seems like we do you know and but we shouldn't mm-hmm. and it's yeah. it's probably high time that we we did away with it i mean you know corruption was a major concern of our framers so i know that they wouldn't be pleased with this and they wouldn't be pleased that the steps that they left us to remove such things from our political apparatus were not being taken really by anyone we'll just you know say things like well let's got to be an investigation looked into and then again if this were just some wild accusation out of nowhere you know by uh, someone who told a newspaper or magazine or whatever it was a story. I could I could understand that, but it's not. It's a major investigation by you know the United States <laughs> government of one of their own, and it's the second time. You know, so I, I I just you know I don't I don't have a lot of patience for it anymore. You know, like I said, because I I think the the garbage that went on with Trump needs to be held to account. That's in its process. So I think this stuff does too. I mean, it's like I've said before, and I'm not doing it just because of that, but it's like I said before, if, you know, if if Hunter Biden committed a crime or whatever, I'm not going to come on here and defend him because he's related to somebody that I approve of, whatever, you know, take care of business. I mean, you show me a crime, and I'll support it. And you know what? I don't, you know, I don't know why. Yeah, but, the, but the trouble is Hunt- still whining about that. Uh, in Hunter's case, he has been investigated. He has been indicted. Well, first of all, no, wait a minute. The thing they're they're indicting him for is a crime that's very rarely, if ever, prosecuted. Mm-hmm. And they're only doing it because he is Biden. Hunter Biden's son, and they don't want it to seem like they're letting him skate. But if I did that same crime, I would probably skate or get some kind of like you know diversion or whatever in fact i think he had diversion hmm. uh you well, know. i think he had an opportunity but he he didn't take it you oh, know he, and he because yeah. he wanted more than they were willing to give i mean he's the one again he's the one that put himself in these positions i mean my understanding from this was he could have had that but what his lawyers wanted mm-hmm. was the entire thing all at once they wanted to say you know once we do this you can never indict him for any other further crimes that you think he committed in the past. And they said, no, nah, we're not really willing to do that. You know, if we uncover a new document tomorrow that shows you committed a crime, you're not, we're not giving you a, an all for one. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, that's what we want. So they said, well, take it or leave it. And he said, leave it. So, you know, so if he's got other stuff that he's worried about. Yeah. But all I'm saying problem. is the crime that they're charging him with is one which is they say has very rarely been prosecuted. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, well, it would also seem that, like a, yeah. somewhat of a hard one to prove because yeah. unless he I didn't he admit that he had used why drugs. It, why is it hard to prove? He filled out a federal firearms uh, uh, application. Um, Along with 12 million other NRA people. To purchase a gun. You know, and uh, so it's not hard to prove that he purchased a gun. The thing is, is a lot of people purchase a gun that are on on medication. But the the fact is... Wasn't he a convicted felon, though? uh, 
If no. he was, they'd be charging him with that. that no. that's, that's what I thought he was. And they haven't charged him yet for the taxes the because he's paid. No. He's paid I the. Don't think no. so. He paid, paid the taxes and the penalty. Yep. No. So who knows if they'll go after him on that? So really, what they're no. going after him I, on? I, I think he's probably still got some open stuff out there that isn't yet settled. But my point is, is I don't know. I think my overall point was I don't care. Yeah. If you have broken the law, yeah, then you've got to deal with that. And I'm not going to defend him. I'm not going to defend Bob Menendez. I'm not going to defend Trump. I mean, it, you know, I don't care if I voted for a guy 12 times and my life is appreciably better. I think it is directly due to that guy. I'm just not going to do You know, I mean, I, I just wouldn't do it. So, and, and I think if if Democrats take any other stance with Menendez, for example, that they are going to open themselves up to, you know, being criticized. And, and that's why they're not. Probably fair, you know. Maybe. That's why they're not. As Alex said, uh, the governor of New Jersey called for him to, to resign. Right. And I definitely agree with Josh. Uh, you know, holding a public office is not a right. It's a privilege. I mean, everyone has a right to a fair trial, for sure. But nobody has a, has the right to hold a public office. You have to have be held to a higher standard. On the other hand, on the other hand, George uh, Santos. Well, I mean, on the other well, hand, yeah, we we've, we've created a system where corruption is a direct uh, direct uh, result of 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 the of, of the job. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, people feel that they can just be corrupt and hey, nobody's going to ask them to be, be held accountable. And the fact is, you know, I mean, let's face it, Trump's been doing pretty sketchy stuff most of his life. Oh, yeah. Okay? And he, it's only now that anybody has said, hey, well, it's time, you're not going to get away with it any longer. And then you got all these Republicans going, oh, well, why, if, if, why is Trump being charged but Hunter Biden isn't in jail? What do the two have to do with each other? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But but, you know their their cries were false because it appears that both may be on their way there, and I have no problem with either one of them. You know, I mean. Do you really think Donald Trump's going to spend any time in jail? Oh, I don't have really any idea. But I, I know that he's he's in the process of having to face a battle for a criminal indictment. You know, just well, like Hunter Biden, I don't really know if we'll go to jail, but he's going to be under a criminal indictment and have to pay the consequences. Oh, there are three major trial. criminal indictments, and then there's the indictment in New York, which I think is not as serious. Let me put it that mm -hmm. way. You know, well, but any of them could come with 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 time. Uh, you know, uh, incarceration, and I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know yeah. that anyone knows the answer to that, but. Yeah. We should never be here, but here we are. Ray? You know? so. Yeah, yeah. If it came down to Trump going to jail, do you think there's any chance that he would flee like other billionaires have done? <laughs> yes. Because a lot of billionaires have fleed. Yes, there's a chance. I yeah. think there's a good good chance. Well, wait a minute. Did he have to give up his passport? No. No. That's another way he's got special treatment. You know, they say, oh, you know, or, uh, Hunter, or Hunter or Biden's projected. getting special treatment. There's no more special treatment than what's happened to Trump. He doesn't right, even yeah. have to show up for his arraignments, for crying out loud. And he has a plane to take him anywhere he wants to go in the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the guy from Nissan, he fleed. But, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, but Nissan. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, he should. Uh, they, they should at least grab his passport. Yeah. You know. I mean, where in the world does he have to go anyway? You know, he doesn't travel. Russia. Out the only time he ever travels out of the country is to go to Scotland to go see his golf course, and that's about I, it. I just think know. either way, Menendez, you know, Hunter Biden. Even if you can't get a guilty verdict, these people do not belong on the the public payroll. And I'm not saying Hunter Biden is. I know he's not a government official. He, never he certainly tried to trade on the fact that he, knew he that. tried to trade on his father. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, trade in on you know, his and and so he deserves his banishment, if you will. And Bob yeah. Menendez deserves his too. 
We're playing the theme right now, and uh, <laughs> I, I, a lot of people here tonight that wish this were last night. <laughs> but last night was terrific anyway. Hey, Jeff, good having you here, my friend. Thank you. You know, I noticed when you were dozing off a little bit, your head, top of your head showed. <laughs> and you're, you haven't lost anything, have you? What no. kind of a Jew are you? <laughs> He lost his foreskin while he was a baby. Yeah. And of course, uh, 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 Brian. Thank you, Brian. There he is. He's somewhere here. There. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and of course, Tom Yamaguchi. Call us more often. We love having you here. You're so Last night, I was at uh, back to school night for my uh, granddaughter. So that's my excuse. Oh. <laughs> And, okay, well that's fine. Uh, uh, Kevin, it, like everybody feels they have to have an excuse now. Kevin, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Josh, good seeing you again. All. Charlie, you're wonderful. Ray, good to see you. Uh, Alan, good to see you again tonight. And Tony, I don't know what happened to Tony. He was playing with his he, dog. He sent me a text. He lost his connection. The dog hit the wire to his throat. <laughs> Oh. The dog ate his homework. Okay, well, everybody, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. There'll be another one assembling right here with Jack Bishop next. You can call Skype at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live to get on Jack's show. We'll see you again on Monday at uh, 4 o'clock on uh, Facebook with uh, the pop-up show and then we'll see you again right here same time same station in life and in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her okay bye-bye everybody mm -hmm.